Hi, my name is Adedoe. I'm the compliance lead at Mono. Hi there, my name is Glory and I'm the legal associate at Mono. Today, we'll be taking you through a quick dive into the open banking regulations issued by CBN and why this is important for you as an individual user or business. Sometime in 2021, the Central Bank of Nigeria put out the regulatory framework for open banking in Nigeria. Then, on the 7th of March 2023, CBN published the operational guidelines for open banking, making it the first African country to approve open banking. Now, if you're wondering what does open banking mean, anyways, let's explore that. Now, what is open banking? Open banking is a system where banks and financial institutions allow third-party providers, just like Mono, to securely access and share customers' financial data or even enable account-to-account -account payments, but through APIs. And this must be done with the consent of the customer. If you'd like to learn more about open banking, you can watch the open banking introduction video in this series, and you can find the link to that video in the description box below. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of these open banking regulations. The operational guidelines and standards for open banking in Nigeria were set up to govern how banks, API providers, and financial service businesses can access and use customer permission data. The guidelines also share clear rules that ensure data security and transparency in the open banking system and create the opportunity for more innovation and healthy competition in the financial industry. The key provisions in the open banking regulations include regulatory requirements and rules of engagement, institutional tiers and le their level of participation in the open banking space, responsibilities of API providers and consumers in the open banking system, the establishment of CBN's open banking registry and consent management and data privacy. So let's break down these guidelines. So we'll be speaking about the regulatory requirements and rules of engagement. The guideline specifies the need for participants to comply with CBS directives on open banking and relevant re regulations governing the financial sector to ensure that the ecosystem operates securely while protecting the interests of the customers. Secondly, we'll speak about the institutional tiers and their level of participation. The guideline also highlights the institutions that can participate in the open banking system, such as API providers, API consumers, and of course, the customers. API providers provide API services to other participants, like the API consumers, to give them secure access to customer data. Then API consumers use the API infrastructure built by the API providers to access data. And then customers are the account holders who provide consent before the data can be shared for the purpose of accessing financial services. Thirdly, we'll discuss the responsibilities of API providers and consumers in the open banking system. So these responsibilities include executing data access and service level agreement, adhering to operational guidelines and technical requirements for open banking in Nigeria, obtaining consent from customers before accessing their data and many more. All parties must comply with data protection regulation to protect customer data and prevent unethical practices. Fourthly, the establishment of the open banking registry. The CBN provides that an open banking registry will be established to maintain oversight on regulated participants and to also enhance transparency within the open bank ecosystem. Fifth, consent management. Now, the secure sharing of financial data is a key component in open banking and to maintain data security standards the guideline explicitly mentions that customers consent and authorization are provided for and the customer should be able to withdraw this consent at any point now let's discuss the benefits of the open banking regulation and how that affects you as a user of a digital financial product or services now here are some of the benefits firstly financial inclusion and access to more innovative and personalized financial services. Now, with open banking, you're able to securely share your financial data points and patterns across all your accounts with businesses. In turn, this provides businesses with the insights that they need to build more relevant services for you. For example, if you have your investment savings and insurance assets distributed across different apps and accounts, a business can lay an open banking API to build a digital finance management service that makes it easier for you to view and manage all your assets in one place. This also opens you up to access to a wider range of financial opportunities using your data, like being able to share your investment data 
to access faster credit or financial advisory services. Secondly, giving you more control over how your financial data is assessed. Now, because open banking promises better control over your data, you are able to grant your permission before a business or third party can access your financial data. This ensures that you know how your data is shared, who has access to your data, and how it is used to power better money experiences for you. For players in the industry, the application of the open banking regulations will lead to improvement in their business processes. So here are some of the ways that this can happen. The first being more product innovation for consumers. Fintech businesses can leverage open banking APIs to innovate more for their customers. This could be simple solutions like improved onboarding and KYC processes for your product or complex use cases like building credit decision engines for rent financing product. It could also mean more collaboration between players in the ecosystem. As a fintech, for example, this regulation plan creates the opportunity for you to partner with banks and other fintechs and financial service players in the industry. With this partnership, APIs can provide richer data across finance areas that could help you build more innovative products. Imagine being able to directly access customers' verified income data from their salary or payroll account, and then feeding this into your credit scoring engine to make more informed decisions. In general, the possible impact of open banking regulation on financial and payment services could look like less friction in the financial system. So because financial service providers are more connected as a result, we can expect to see more seamless and secure data sharing from one financial institution to another. Information is more readily and securely accessible. We have shorter wait times. We have elimination of so many mundane processes in financial services. Imagine never having to fill a long form to open a financial account again. We can also expect faster, cheaper, and more secure open banking payments too. Simply, more modern money experiences for everyone. Finally, we can expect a more inclusive financial system. Customers who were ordinarily excluded from accessing digital financial products or services can now do so by simply sharing their financial data points across alternate sources like telcos. I hope you have found this video helpful. We have linked some resources in the description if you have more questions about open banking and its benefits. Thank you for watching.